In this video, I'm going to show you how to modify the firmware of a standard CF card to allow it to boot an operating system on various machines you might want to use this in place of a hard drive in. Um, so for example, this MacBook Air 1 comma 1 year will not boot off a stock CF card like this. So you can put this in, install an OS on it, but the system firmware will not detect it. However, when you boot into a macOS installer, it will detect the drive and it will install a copy of macOS onto it, but when you go to reboot, uh, the system firmware will not detect it, and as such, you cannot boot from it. Now, this method that I'm about to show you here will apply to any CF card that uses the Silicon Motion SM2236 um, NAND storage IDE controller. So basically, the way these uh, CF cards work, and I'll show you one I have taken apart right here, is the SM2236 is this chip right here, and it just controls uh, these NAND chips here. So it's just an interface basically to allow NAND flash storage to interface with an IDE bus. So basically, the issue with these CF cards is they're programmed in such a way where their capabilities that are advertised are not something that the system is able to recognize, if that makes any sense. Um, I'm not really sure in the details on that, um, but basically I found that using the appropriate uh, MP tool or mass production tool for the SM2236 chipset, we can reprogram the firmware on these drives, or on these cards rather, to actually work on standard IDE buses such as the one in the MacBook Air 1 comma 1 here. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in the MacBook Air. You can see I've already got its little cable attached here. And I'm gonna boot it up and into a macOS installer and show you that the drive is detected um, and show you exactly what it does when we try to boot off of this drive. All right, so as you can see here, I've gone ahead and booted the MacBook Air off an external drive um, into a macOS installer here. And you can see right here that the internal uh, IDE bus is detected with that CF card that we installed. Um, and I have already installed a copy of macOS on here. Um, I don't know if that'll be visible here, but let me go ahead and uh, I'll open up Terminal real quick and show you the contents of that, that CF card right now. So yeah, as you can see, uh, Macintosh HD there, which is that CF card, does have a full install of macOS already on it that I just finished installing, and I uh, found that, of course, would not boot afterwards. So let me go ahead and quit out of this, restart the machine, and show you exactly what it does. So we're going to go ahead and just hold down the Option key here and let the machine boot. All right, and as you can see there, the CF card with a full install of macOS 10.6 Snow Leopard on it is not detected at all, so you can't boot from it. Of course, I can boot from the installer drive, but of course, that doesn't do you much good here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the CF card removed and connect it to an IDE to USB adapter. Um, that way, I'll be able to use it on a standard computer, and I'll show you exactly how to reprogram the firmware on it. All right, so as you can see here, I've got the CF card in a CF card to ZIF IDE adapter. I have that connected to a ZIF IDE to desktop IDE adapter, and then I've got that connected to a USB to IDE adapter, which is connected to this machine. So I know that's kind of convoluted, and there are other adapters you can use instead of this, uh, but this is what I have on hand for right now, so that's what I'll be using. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the power to the drive. And you can hear that Windows has detected it. And by the way, you will need a Windows machine to do this. And you will need to verify that your CF card has an SM2236 controller in it. Um, as you can see on this particular one, it's printed right on there. Uh, but there are some other CF cards, such as this SanDisk one right here, that have an SM2236 controller, but as you can see here, it's been rebranded as a SanDisk controller. So I found that kind of interesting, but this is indeed an SM2236 card. And any CF card you get that's 128 gigabytes or larger, 
um, will more than likely have an SM2236 controller on it. Um, so if you have a larger capacity CF card like this, chances are you'll be getting an SM2236 controller because that's one of the very few IDE NAND controllers that actually supports that large of flash. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and head over to Windows here, um, and we're gonna open the SM2236 MP tool right here. So as you can see, the tool is now open here, and you're gonna wanna select Scan Drive. And as you can see, we have a detected drive there. It detects the capacity of it. Um, so yeah, that is what you wanna see. If your drive is not shown here, that means that your card probably does not have an SM2236 controller. Um, so now what we're gonna to wanna to do is head on over to the parameter tab here. So before you do anything, you're gonna to need to select this edit config button, and it's got this stupid password on it, which I don't really understand, but the password for this tool is 320, just the number 320. And as you can see, entering that enables all of the options here. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go over to the flash select option here and go ahead and select auto. So you can see it detected three different flash chips that correspond to that ID. And now what you're gonna, what you're gonna wanna determine is the capacity of the chips you have installed. So this drive or this card is 128 gigs in size. So it'll be made up of probably four 256 gigabyte drive or 256 gigabit chips or two 512 gigabit chips. And luckily for us here, the part number of the chips they're using is actually written on the card itself, but you might not be that lucky. Um, normally, uh, the flash that will be selected here, there will only be one option of, so it'll be pretty obvious which one you'll select. Uh, but in the case of this card, you'll have to figure it out based on the size of the card and the configuration. So before, if you have an option like this where there are multiple chips, if you go back over to the test tab and then just click down here on the drive you have selected there, you can see which channels the chips are on. So a chip could have dual channels and four CEs per channel, but in this case, I'm gonna assume based on this that there are four discrete chips on the board. And so we're gonna go ahead and head back over here auto again and we can confirm that based on this part number written on the card itself 256G08AME and that doesn't correspond to any of them so that's that the the part number on the card is not even correct at all um, so I'll go ahead and just assume based on my assumption here that there are four discrete chips so we're gonna just go ahead and select 256 gigabit here all right, and now that that's selected, uh, we wanna look at the other parameters here. Um, the model name here, you can change to whatever you want. All that's gonna be is what it says in like device manager or disk utility in OS X. Um, so I'm just gonna leave this default for right now. It doesn't really matter. Um, the other thing you're gonna to wanna to check here for is the transfer mode. Um, so you're gonna to wanna to select uh, basically the highest options you have available here. Um, and this is the important one, UDMA mode. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that's set to UDMA 6 for the fastest um, drive speed possible. Um, and disk size, just select auto, that's fine. So everything else here should just be set to the default options. So with that all done, you'll just wanna select save config and head back over to the test tab. And once all that's set, you're just gonna select start. So it'll go through some processes here before it actually programs the firmware. All right, and as you can see, the pretest failed there, and that could mean that we have the wrong option selected for our chip. So we'll head back over here once again, edit config, and we'll instead this time select the, let's just go with the 128 gigabit option there, because it could be two dies and one chip, and there are four chips, so they could be smaller. So you can just go through and try each one. It's not really gonna hurt anything. Of course, it won't work anymore until you have a successful program. Uh, but for now, we'll just save that config, 
go over and start the test or start the programming again. All right, we have another error one more time, so let's check it and change the config one more time to 512 gigabit chips. And we'll try one more time. All right, so it still seems to have some problems here, so let me, uh, I'll do this off camera and I'll show you exactly uh, what I did to resolve this. All right, so as you can see, I did get the, the uh, card to pass there. However, as you can see now, the size is incorrect. So I was incorrect in my assumption that they are 256 gigabit chips, and they are exactly, or actually, 128 gigabit chips. So we're gonna redo it with those selected. And I found that the uh, reason that I was having those problems is just because uh, the card was not like reset properly. Um, so it was literally as simple as just removing the card or killing power to it and reconnecting it to the machine. So um, if you do have that issue, just unplug the card, plug it back in, and you should be good to go. Um, so without doing that, again, I'm going to go ahead and reprogram it with the 128 gigabit chip selected and see if it works this time. All right, so as you can see, it was successful that time. So let's see if our capacity goes down and our capacity is not going down. So uh, I don't I don't know what the deal is now with it. So I'll have to figure that out now as well and see why the capacity is wrong. Um, because if you leave it that way, of course, it's not going to work properly. So I'll go ahead and figure that out as well and uh, show you exactly what to do if that occurs. All right, so I don't know why I didn't just try this before, but I think uh, to, in order to get around this or to reset it, we just have to disconnect and reconnect the card once again. So I'll go ahead and try that. Scan drive, and it's still detecting it as um, 256 gigabytes. Maybe they just installed that many chips in this card and I they just programmed it to only read 128 gigs, which is quite strange. I might just have to open this and take a look at what the chips are exactly in it, so that way I'll know for sure. Uh, but I did select uh, the 128 gigabit chips. Um, I guess I could select the disk size down there. I'll try that real quick, see if that makes any difference. So we know the drive is 128 gigs in size, so we'll save that and try one more time here. So, I mean, the program sees the size as being 256 gigs. That's really strange, so I guess I'm just gonna have to open the card up and take a look at the actual chips on it and see what they are because I don't see why the tool would lie, but it's being quite interesting. So I'll go ahead and get it apart if I can and uh, then we'll know for sure exactly what chips it has and know exactly what the capacity of the drive really is. All right, so as you can see here, I've gotten the card open, at least one side of it, and I pulled the board out just a little bit to see if there were two chips on the back, and there are. And if we take a look at the chips, the part number on them is NW701. I don't know if you can make that out, uh, but yeah, there you go, NW701. So I went ahead and looked that up on the Micron FBGA decoder webpage here, and that came back as a part number of MT29F512G08CMC. So they are 512 gigabit chips, and there are four of them on the board, which means this card is actually 256 gigabytes. So the tool was correct, and whoever sold this card just reprogrammed it to not use half the storage on it. So I don't understand why anyone would do that, uh, but I guess in the process of doing this, we gained an extra 128 gigs on the card that I didn't even realize would be there. So yeah, that's that's a good, good benefit, I guess. So a good surprise. So let's go ahead and connect it again. And now that we know the chips, here, let's go over to the test page. We'll scan drive again. 
Um, so it is in ROM code mode right now because I did try to flash it again and failed. Um, so we'll select edit config again. We'll change our disk size back to auto because apparently the tool is correct. We'll select the flash as the 512 gigabit chips. Save. And we'll go ahead and write the firmware one more time. All right, and as you can see, the programming was successful. We have a capacity of 256 gigs, even though this was obviously, according to the label at least, a 128 gigabyte drive. So yeah, that's quite interesting. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and connect this back into the MacBook Air, install a new copy of Mac OS, because of course it erased all the data that was on this drive and see if the drive is now bootable. All right, you can see I'm once again booted back in the Mac OS Snow Leopard installer here. So let's go head over to Disk Utility. And as you can see, we now have our reprogrammed CF card detected here as a 256 gig drive. So we'll go ahead and format it accordingly here. GUID partition map is selected and it is and we'll just go ahead and partition the drive all right so with that done we'll go ahead and proceed with the snow leopard installation so it detects our drive there we'll change some of the options here And now we're installing Snow Leopard on it. So I'll go ahead and let the installation complete and see if the drive is now bootable. All right, the Snow Leopard installation was completed successfully. So let's go ahead and power it on and see if the boot menu detects the drive. And as you can see, it does. So let's go ahead and boot from it. Everything seems to be working as intended. There's the intro video right there. All right, so as you can see here, the machine has fully been set up. So let's go ahead and check out the drive here. So yeah, I mean, as you can see, it says there's 244 gigs available on our SSD here, our CF card. Um, so there the in, there's the info about it, 253 gigs of usable space, 244 gigs free, of course. Um, I guess the last thing we'll check out here is Disk Utility and uh, see what that shows us. It should show basically the exact same thing it did in the installer. So yep, there it is. The 256 gigabyte drive, which I just named eSave 16 g which is kind of funny. That's just what the default uh, setting was in the MP tool. Uh, but yeah, everything seems to be working perfectly. So. Yeah, it detects all 256 gigs, or most of the 256 gigs of space, and everything is working perfectly. So that is how to modify or reflash the firmware on a CF card, or at least an SM2236 based CF card, to allow it to have compatibility with systems that otherwise wouldn't, and be able to boot on machines like this MacBook Air 1,1. So, hope you enjoyed this video.